to start with, I just sat through the um, gift wrapping and I thought that was really exciting. And I think that one of the lovely things about this time of year um, is that giving gifts is special. If you can make your gift, it, it makes it even more special. So um, with the decoupage that we're gonna show you, um, we're gonna give you some ideas and some inspiration that you can use to make some of your Christmas gifts. Now I know there's only a few days now um, until Christmas, but I promise you that um, this is a very easy technique um, and we're going to give you as much uh, help and uh, ideas as we can so that you can do it. Um, and if you can't do it for Christmas, it doesn't matter. I think it's something that you can enjoy doing. I will give you a little warning. It becomes addictive. Um, I have here with me Amanda. So I just moved the computer so you can see Amanda as well. We're here together. We're in a bubble, so don't worry. We're not um, contravening any of the um, COVID rules. Um, Amanda is one of my very dear friends and she's absolutely addicted to decoupage. <laughs> um, Amanda started making the bottles, some of the bottles we're gonna be showing you and she just couldn't stop and she made more and more and more and eventually you had what, maybe 20? More than 20 bottles she had made. Wow. And she lives in a little flat and she doesn't need 20 bottles. So she got this idea. She went on to um, her uh, little village Facebook and she told her neighbors and her community that she had these lovely bottles. And if anybody wanted that one, they could just help themselves. And she put the box out on her front step and she got so many people coming back and saying, they were so excited and uh, she's like the number one celebrity in her village now. <laughs> and beautiful. they went so quickly that one lady was really um, devastated because by the time she got there, there were no bottles left. And she had seen a picture of one that Amanda made that had horses on it. And who was it, her daughter? Her mother. Oh, her mother had passed away and she wanted to have a bottle which had a horse on it so yeah. she could put it on her mother's grave. And so Amanda's going to show you later. She straight away messaged the lady said, don't worry, I'll make another one for you. And so the one that Amanda's going to show you today is the one that she's making to give to this lady. Oh, that's lovely. So there's lots and lots of things that you can do with these. They're inexpensive. You'll see we're, we're recycling bottles. We're recycling lots of different surfaces. So shall we just get stuck in now, do you think? Go for it, please. Go for it. Go so for it. I, I, I we just, can't wait. <laughs> I have to work out, share the screen. Where do I do that now? Can you remind me? Yep, down at the bottom and the green. Oh yes, I see that. There we go. What does that mean? They need to enable those, needs to enable. It you says that you need to enable me. Oh, sorry. Pastor Dan, would you be able to make a uh, Carolyn, a co-host, please. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure I can. Uh, Caroline, uh, more um, co-host. Sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Okay. Now there we go. And there it is. Right. Can you see that now? Uh, yep. If you just go into presentation mode. That's right. Where is that now? At uh, bottom left, it's the third button along. That's the one. Great. Sorry, I don't remember things very well. That's right, all right. <laughs> okay, so this is this lovely badge that you're going to do. And I don't, this is not that interesting about me, but just so that you know that. Um, I am retired now, but I was in the craft industry for over 30 years and I um, have done all sorts of different things in the industry. 
and even though I'm retired, it's really a pleasure now because I do all these things as a hobby and I do them in a volunteer um, capacity. And one of the things that I would like to share with you is that we've made this into a ministry at our church. So we have um, been doing this for about three years, three, four years now, where we have people from the community. And I, when I say people from the community, I mean we have uh, between 20 and 30 people come at a time from different um, areas in our community to share with us because they love crafts and they love being creative. And so um, when we started having the issues with COVID and coron coronavirus, we changed our crafter noons to crafter zooms. <laughs> and we have been doing crafter zooms now since May. And uh, it's been really uh, an interesting little roller coaster ride that we've been on because, of course, it meant a lot more work and, and organization. But this is something that I hope that some of you will feel inspired to do, to share it with your neighbors. It doesn't have to be done with your church. You can do it around your kitchen table. You know, it's something lots and lots of uh, young people really enjoy doing creative things. And I will also tell you one more thing. Being creative is a healthy activity. Mm -hmm. So now the requirements that you have for this badge, I can't read them. Oh, there we go. So you need to be able to um, tell the meaning and the history of de decoupage, which I'm going to um, share with you in a minute. You need to be able to make a list of the materials and the equipment, obviously, that you need to do um, decoupage. Um, describe how to prepare wood or um, a metal object. Explain three ways in which the print can be used in decoupage. And then you have to make two out of, um, of the list of different um, projects there. We're going to give you some inspiration and some ideas, but I'm sure that you'll be able to come up with other things. So um, we'll move. Oh, that will, I have to go back. There we go. So the meaning of decoupage. So it's a 20th century word and it comes from French. And I suspect that Natalie could tell you how to say that in a French way. Can you, Natalie? Um, découpage. Okay, okay. It meaning, and what it means is it's to cut out. That's what it means. Now, the technique itself is where you take cutouts that are um, put onto varying surfaces. Originally, people were putting them onto um, furniture in particular but they can go on wood and glass, they can go on lampshades, they can go on boxes, um, metal, all sorts of different things that you can put it on. And as you get start doing it, you'll find more and more ways and um, surfaces that you can use it on. So the history of decoupage. Well, they say, they tell us that they think it originated with um, the East Siberian tombs where the people would decorate the tombs of the people who had passed on with these cutouts. Um, usually it was felt is what they, they tell us. Then in the 12th century, they have examples of where um, China used paper cutouts to decorate boxes and lanterns, uh, windows and different things like that. During the 17th century in Italy and France, it became um, even more popular. So uh, they began really perfecting and, and making much more polished items. So they became very valuable and um, things that people liked doing. So then it became very fashionable for the um, the people in the French and Italian and English courts. Um, so it was a pastime that they enjoyed doing. So you can see here furniture that has been decorated with these various um, printed cutouts. Then in the 1960s, it was revived 
And the decoupage medium that we use, it is from the 1960s. And my mother actually remembers using what you'll see later, it's called Mod Podge. My mother remembers using it and it's been around for a long time. And I've been very fortunate in that in my work, I got to know the, um, the CEO or the chairman of the company that owns Mod Podge, the brand Mod Podge. And so he's been very generous with us at the mission and uh, given us lots of good ideas and also some free products as well. Anyway, um, so you can see in the 60s that they revived this, um, this form of, of creativity. And um, it was nice because um, people were beginning to really catch on to doing creative things. It was post-war and it was enough time so that people weren't quite so strapped for um, money and everything. And like I said, it became almost an addiction and they were finding everything that they could possibly do to decoupage. So you can see this piece of furniture here. Um, it is quite elaborate and quite modern looking, isn't it? Uh, here, these are some fabulous pictures of um, examples that Natalie found. They used um, decoupage on shoes. Um, I think this is a really uh, cool chair that they decoupage. So, you know, you can revitalize um, old pieces of furniture and shoes and things. So the second requirement is about the materials that you need. So in the picture, I've just given you a few examples. You have glass and wood and um, pottery. Um, and then the Mod Podge is the decoupage medium that we use. I, it is used as the adhesive as well as the varnish that goes over the top. And then the paper images, you can use gift wrap paper you can even print things on your printer that you can cut out and use. So you could even use photographs. Um, my favorite cutouts are using serviettes because you can get such a fine, fine texture that it looks hand painted. So a lot of the things that you'll see, it looks like once we've finished it, it's completely smooth and it looks like it's been hand painted. I can't paint, so that's why I really like this because it looks um, pretty uh, uh, good. So the tools and equipment that you need, obviously to cut out things, you need your scissors and um, usually a, a small pair of scissors is what you use the most, but a large pair can, um, can be helpful as well. Um, paint brushes, I like smallish size, flat paint brushes. Um, that doesn't mean you can't use round ones. It doesn't mean you can't use, you know, really small, tiny ones. These are just my preferred ones. And then the block on the top is sandpaper. So that if you're doing um, wood, you want to get a smooth surface. So you need the sandpaper and a sponge is used when you um, are going to paint um, glass paint onto, um, a, onto a glass surface. Now it says they're a soft cloth and I didn't think I needed to show you what a soft cloth was. Um, the reason though is so that you can wipe off any dust that, that or any um, sort of blemish like that that it gets onto your surface. So I'm very quickly going to tell you what the technique is but later we're going to go through and we're going to show you what um, a, a live demonstration of the technique. So the first thing you need to do is you need to prepare your surface. So um, you want your glass to be clean, you want your wood to be smooth and, and free of any debris and all. Then you need to cut out your images. So the second um, photo there shows um, how you cut out your images. Then you have to decide how you want to arrange the images. And there are several different ways that you can do that. And we'll talk you through that later on. And then you glue those images into position. And as I said before, the new decoupage mediums like Mod Podge, um, you can use it both for um, 
that as an adhesive to glue down your um, image. And you can also use it as the lacquer or the varnish for on top of it. That's what makes it really nice. The other thing is that it's um, water soluble. So you can wash your brushes um, with water and you can wash your hands with water. And um, it's just a nice thing to work with. However, I will tell you that if you want to use the um, old fashioned or the more traditional method, you would glue down your image with whatever adhesive you want to use. And then you would use a varnish um, and you would varnish over the top. With a varnish, you would probably need between 10 or more layers of varnish because you put very, very thin layers of varnish on. With Mod Podge, Sometimes you can get away a with two or three layers of Mod Podge, but certainly you would never need like 10 layers. Um, so that's just to give you an idea of the differences. So with all surfaces, the general instructions that you need is that you want to make sure that they're clean. You want to make sure that they are as smooth as possible. And you want to be sure that they're dry before you start working. Am I going too fast, do you think? Okay. I think you're spot on. You're absolutely okay, good. spot on. Okay, good. When we do this on television, we have to go really fast because people can then, you know, they can go back and look at, at, at it on catch up. So when you're preparing a wood surface, um, first I sand it down. Now this particular piece of wood that's in the photo here is a bookend book. Yeah, bookend. And so it actually had some varnish on it. So I needed to get as much of that varnish off as possible. I didn't need to get all of it off, but as much as possible. And I wanted it also to be smooth. So I used sandpaper to do that. Then I removed all the dust. And then I used an acrylic paint to just sort of seal the wood and also to give a background paint to it. So you can see, and later on, you'll be able to see the finished um, piece. So the, there is another option. If you don't want to paint it, you can do what I call the shabby chic um, method. And I'm gonna talk you through that a bit later. So that's the other option. When you're preparing glass, um, as the previous um, presenter said, um, you can get the most amazing bottles from uh, that aren't alcohol. Um, you can see here, I've put two different ones on that we can get here in our own um, store. I, I think I got these in Tesco's, but um, you need to make sure that you get all of the labels off. So I've shown you a picture here with the, a bottle with the labels on and then a bottle without. Yep. The way that I found the easiest way to get rid of, um, to get these off is I just, take um, a small bowl that these will fit in. And I put a little bit of um, fairy liquid or, or dishwashing detergent and put it in and I soak them, let the water go all completely over them. I put it in the hottest water that comes out of my faucet and I let it just soak. Sometimes I let it soak overnight. Some bottles, the labels just float off. And we love those bottles, don't we, Amanda? <laughs> Some bottles, you have to get um, your fingernail under it. So like that, the pink bottle there or orangey bottle that says bottle green on it. On that one, you just have to get your thumbnail under it and you just pull hard and it comes off nice and clean, really good. The bottles that we're not so keen on are the ones where the first layer lifts off really easy and then you have the adhesive layer. Okay, so I just, I just get, um, you know, the little scratchers. Ooh, what happened? I think you just popped out of presentation mode, I think, I'm not sure. Okay, well, uh, let me carry on. It looks like something's going on with my computer. I hope this isn't gonna be a problem. If you, I think, press is F5 or F9. Oh, here it is. Oh, there it is, good. So, um, uh, what I do is I just get, you know, the scratchers that you use in when you're washing up dishes, 
and yeah, I, I just scratch it off. I, I, I use a separate one from what I use for other things because it, you know, it gets all gunked up and everything. Um, now, sometimes people say, well, you know, where do I get bottles? Where am I, where am I gonna get all these bottles? You can buy them like this. And there are some bottles where I actually go and buy because I like the shape of the bottle and it has a certain kind of oil in it. And I, I um, decant the oil from the bottle I want to use into a bigger bottle um, so that I can still use the oil, but I can have my bottle straight away. The other thing is, if you go to a bottle bank, usually on a Sunday, loads of people are offloading their bottles on a Sunday. So you can um, get some bottles that way if you want to, or you can make friends with neighbors, which is what a lot of our church members have done. Their neighbors have given, the, given them their um, empty bottles. So there's lots of ways that you can get different bottles. Uh, okay, here we go. So the options, there are two options for preparing um, glass surfaces, surfaces. And this is what we're gonna be demonstrating. Amanda's gonna demonstrate um, using glass paint. So she'll explain it much more carefully, but I, here it gives you the, um, the information that you need. You need a small piece of kitchen sponge and I usually take a bigger sponge as you can see in the picture and I just cut a small piece out with just a pair of scissors and you're going to use glass paint. Um, there, uh, glass paint is not as easy to get as, as maybe acrylic paint, but it, you can get it. Um, definitely you can get it on Amazon. That's how I get it now. Okay. And you I'm are going to just dab right? the paint onto the glass. You want it to be a really thin layer to start with, and Amanda will show you that. And if you want it to be darker, you just put multiple layers, but you have to make sure that the paint is completely dry before you do the second layer. Because if it isn't, the, the second layer you try to put on will lift up the first layer. So that's a really important thing to remember when you're doing glass paint, to just let it dry really thoroughly between um, layers of paint. Okay. So the second option, remember I told you previously about the, what I call the shabby chic um, method, is where you cover your surface with tissue paper. So you can see in one picture, I just chopped up and tore up different shapes, any different shape, size, and everything of tissue paper. And then the photograph just above it, I put a very thin layer using the paintbrush, a very thin layer of the Mod Podge, and I lay the tissue paper piece over it and I smooth it out with my finger. Sometimes I use the brush and I just continue to do that until I've completely covered the bottle that I am working on or the glass piece that I'm working on. And um, you want it to, each piece you want to overlap a little bit um, not lots, but a little bit. And pretty soon you'll see that picture up in the left-hand corner, that's where it's completely covered. I cover even the bit at the very, very top where the rings are, where the lid screws on. But that again, it's completely up to you. The Mod so, Podge works. The Mod Podge works fine on all types of surfaces. Doesn't absolutely. It? And the other thing I can tell you about Mod Podge is there's lots of different types of Mod Podge. My favorite is the matte. I like the matte because you can get it where it's glossy. You can get it where it has glitter in it. You can get it where it's um, it can be baked. Uh, there's just a whole range of them. If you go on to, um, it's made by Plaid. So if you go on to their website, they have all sorts of information and lots of ideas that you can get for it. But it, I've tried lots of different brands and I, believe me, I don't get anything for telling you this. Um, <laughs> I'm just telling you this because my experience has taught me that this works for me the best of any other um, decoupage medium that I've tried. And they, they've been around since the 60s. So they've been around for a long time. <laughs> so um, so the, um, 
with tin, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the surface is a completely clean and completely dry. And then you can either paint it or you can put the shabby chic technique or you can put your images straight onto the tin. Um, I didn't make any tin surfaces because I didn't find any tin um, that I thought would be appropriate. So um, but this is something that you can do. I think tin is more easy to find in the summer months than it is in these sort of autumn and wintery times. Could you use like, um, you know, one of those tins that the, the, the sweets that the, you know, the quality street or something like that? Yes, you could. The, the one thing I would say about is quite a, um, a smooth surface. So you would, if you were going to paint it, you would need to roughen it a little bit okay. with sandpaper maybe because it has that paint surface. Yeah. But if you use the shabby chic one, that would be, that would work really well. Okay. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. So when, so now we're going to look at ways that you can use prints. So I told you how I really like um, using serviettes or napkins, as um, some parts of the world call them napkins. Um, so you can do what we call um, where you cut out every bit of the of the piece. So you see in that picture, you've got um, a serviette. And then in the corner, you have it all cut out. And here I have that piece that's all cut out. So it, I've cut out all around the edges. There's no edges showing. There's no nothing except what I want to show up on my piece. And that's just the top layer, isn't it? You've removed all the backing. Well, right? That's my second thing is, as you can see in the top picture, many serviettes, most serviettes are at least two ply. Some are three. So that top one there is three ply. So the top layer is the one that's printed. And then they have two more very thin layers that make it into a more absorbent serviette. You only want that top layer because it's so thin and so fragile when you put it onto the glass or the wood or whatever it is, it looks hand painted. So that's, that's an important thing to remember when you're doing the serviettes that you want to remove those extra layers of, um, of the serviette. Now, completely different from the decoupage that I do is what is called, they call it three-dimensional decoupage. They call it decoupage because again, it's cut out, but it's done in a completely different way from what has been historically um, considered decoupage. And that is, you know, you'll have seen lots of um, cards where they have like a three-dimensional look to it. Yeah. And the way they do that is that they cut out several of the images and layer them on top of each other with little foam pads. And that gives it more of a three dimensional look. Yeah. Now, back in the 90s, it was really popular and there's it's still something that people do, but it was so popular. People were actually doing pictures um, and framing them. And they had special techniques where if you were doing a flower, you would, you would have it so that you had maybe five or six layers, but not the whole flower. You would have separate petals and the leaves and everything. And they are gorgeous. They're really beautiful. A friend of mine who came home with me to America to visit my mom, she made a picture for my mom of a lighthouse and it was just stunning. And I still have that. Um, that um, framed picture in my storage unit. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a different type of technique and it's called decoupage, but it's not really what we are considering decoupage, but it, that's what it's called. And it's cutting out these different images. So the different ways of using prints, this is the a second way of using print. So if you look at the photograph, you can see that I really just cut along one side and along the top edge. Can you see that? Whereas where the flowers are, there's some white space in between. 
Now, I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to put it onto the surface that's been prepared with the same color as what that um, the background to those flowers is. So it's white. So I would either have white um, uh, glass paint or I would do the shabby chic, which I prefer the shabby chic. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate to you later. Okay. So this one. You know, you had the one that was cut out, everything was cut out, all the excess was cut away. This one, it's just the top edge and, and along one side. Okay. Now this one is another one that I really like. Um, so in this particular um, serviette, it's very much looks like a watercolor. So mm -hmm. the colors are very muted and they sort of run into each other. Um, it's really beautiful. Um, now to try and cut that out would be next to impossible. And believe me, I tried. And um, so I got, I got this idea, why don't I just tear it along the top? And so I found that tearing it is not that easy. So I found somebody who had a really good idea for tearing something else that they were doing. And I tried it on the serviette and it works really well. So what you do is in that glass is a little bit of water and that's a tiny, tiny paintbrush. And I've just painted a little line of water where I want to tear my serviette. And you can imagine, um, as soon as you finish that, when you go to tear it, it has dissolved away enough so that it tears exactly along where you've painted that line. So that's, that's a nice little trick. To brilliant idea, I love it. <laughs> So here I'm showing you some examples um, for inspiration. This is just a collage of all the different things that we've done. Um, this is doing things on glass. So the first one that has all my scissors and paint brushes in it, that's on, uh, it's just a jar that I had and, and it, the images are on glass paint. The little soldier down below, it, that's a sticker. So I just found this really cool sticker and I have um, a, a nephew who loves anything British and he loves soldiers. And so I made this little bottle for him. I just put a sticker on it. Um, the big bottle in the middle, I was really lucky. Somebody gave me what I think they call a magnum and the bottle is big. It's, you know, it's very big. You can't really tell from there. And that's a serviette that I just bought in Tesco's. I just liked that sort of tropical look. And so those leaves are cut out, completely cut out. Um, up in the top corner is, you saw that's that forest fog sort of look. Yeah. And then in the bottom, you see there's two pictures there, one with um, the bottle without the light on and the other with the bottle with the light on. And of course you can make this seasonal as well, especially at this time of year. And I just wanna show you very quickly. So the glass that you see there, um, you can just put a little votive inside the glass or you can tip it upside down and you can put a pillar candle along the top. Yeah, lovely. So there's different things that you can try. Um, the, the glass at the front there is just a 25p glass from Tesco's. And again, the same thing, you can put a little candle in there and it looks not a million dollars, but it looks really good. Um, the bottle at the back, that's that, that remember that tall sort of um, triangular shaped bottle that I showed you at the beginning? That's, that's what I did with that. And um, uh, I can show you those if we have time later. I can show you those with the lights on as well. Oh, I'm just letting you know, Carolyn, on Facebook, everyone's saying, wow, it looks so pretty. Everything's amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to do all of this. So, oh, thank you. I love oh, this so you. far. Amanda's <laughs> been working really hard too. <laughs> They're loving this so far. So good. So now we go to the wood and you can see that uh, what I did with that bookend. So I, now that particular one, I did not cut it all out. I just cut that the exact shape of the, of the wood from a serviette. 
and I absolutely love this. I it's I I just I love the bird. I love the spring flowers. You know, they look like um, cherry blossoms or whatever. Um, in the bottom corner are box files, wooden box files, mm -hmm. because um, if you're a creative person, the last thing you want to look at is just a, a wooden box or even just a painted wooden box. So um, you'll see that I've put the flowers like I showed you for cutting out. I put them all around my box files. Um, the one at the top is my tissue box, and I'm really proud of this, and I'm going to use this as a Christmas present this year. So you'll see, I've done it. I found a serviette that had seahorses. Actually, the picture there is better than me holding it up. And um, I have a friend and her bathroom um, is all sort of decorated as a uh, seaside. So, so that's what she's going to get for Christmas. And then she's not watching other, this. <laughs> in the other corner is just um, a couple of wooden hearts where I have um, just put little decoupage images on it and that's a key ring. So that's a really easy thing to make. And you know, the previous presenter was talking about how you make a gift um, specifically for the person you have them in mind. Well, with the key ring, it's really easy if you know somebody and you know what they like, if they like flowers. Um, I have some serviettes that have sailboats on it. You know, you find out what they like and you can put that little image on it. And, that, and then it becomes something special. And every time they get their keys out and use it, they'll think of you if, you, if you're the one who made it for them. So this is pottery. Um, and this is, this is what we do up have been doing up at um, Abadaran at uh, family camp and also special needs camp. We would paint a, um, a, a flower pot with white paint and then we would cut out images. So you can see, you can get all sorts of um, images. A really nice um, place to look for more juvenile type images is in the party section of the grocery store or the craft store that, you know, they all have party sections and then you'll find lots of things. I found one place that had really gorgeous stars, just lots of stars, and those are so easy to cut out. One thing that I will say is when you're um, picking out your serviettes or your napkins, whatever you call them, um, do think about how you're gonna cut it out. Um, I've, bought, I've bought some that are still in my box because they are way too hard to cut out. And I still haven't worked out how I'm gonna use them, but I will use them. So that's the end of the presentation part. Now I want, I'm gonna stop the share. Okay, so now we're back here. So I want to make it so that speaker view, there we go. So um, now I, I think the, what sort of time do we have? Are we okay? We've got about 15 minutes left, Carol. Okay, so Amanda's going to show you how to do um, the glass painting. Um, I think it's more important for her to show you that because you actually have the step-by-step -step photos for the other one. But if we have time, I'll show you the other one as well. So here we go. Make it how you want to. Right. So on this bottle, I have already done the first layer just to kind of speed things up a little. Um, but I'll talk you through how to, to do it because doing the first and subsequent layers are pretty much the same thing. Only thing to remember is like Car Carolyn said before, you have to make sure that if you're doing multiple layers that the layer before is completely and utterly dry. I've done this one yesterday, so it's completely dry. So this one's ready for, for the next one. So I've been using um, this glass paint. There we go, turn it that way. Okay, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's quite a well-known brand, isn't it? Yes. It is, yes. Um, I find that it dries pretty quickly as well. So I tend to just take the, the little glass bottle, the bottle and my sponge and I just kind of dip it over a little bit just to get a little bit on there. You don't need a great deal. Uh, white on white is probably not the best to show. Um, 
And literally, I just start. I like to work from the bottom upwards simply because I can hold the bottle at the top. And when I get near the top, I can stick my finger in and kind of go around. Um, but there's no specific way, really. It's just whatever you find easier to do. And then literally, it's just dabbing it on, making sure that it is fairly even. Um, and I don't worry too much, especially with the first layer, if I've had a bit where it's kind of smudged a little bit, because especially if I'm going to go over it a second time, you know, it will cover it up. Or if you are sticking your images on, it should just completely cover that. It shouldn't be too much of a problem, but you want it to be as evenly done as possible. So, and it literally is just continuing on, just sponging on. So I just kind of like to do one side like that. Okay. And, and how many layers did you say you would normally do? Put in. How many layers did you say you would normally do of paint? It all it all depends. I tend to only do two. I don't really do more than two because I like it to to um to still be um a little bit opaque so that okay. you know you can still see the the lights. But okay. if um if you're not going to use bottle lights inside, you might want to you might want to do a few more. Um, it there there isn't really a specific rule for how many layers you have to do. It's whatever um, you want to do. I've done some that I've only had one layer, um, and it works just as well. So for the ones that I've been doing, um, I've been preferring two layers simply because it blends in quite well. I'm just going to stop there with this one for now um, so I can show you the one that I've been busy working on. So this is the, the one that I've been working on for one of the people in my village. Um, Lovely. So I've done two layers on this one and then I've put on the images. So she would like horse, she likes horses or her mother liked horses. So this is going to go on a grave. So I've just done. And the other thing that I should say with this bottle in particular, you can see that there's bits I've painted the top there, and then there's a bit that's remained clear, and then I've painted that. So what I've done is I've just stuck some masking tape, because masking tape peels off very easily and it doesn't leave a sticky residue. Yeah. So I've stuck some masking tape around exactly where I don't want the paint to go, painted it the first layer, let it dry, painted it the second layer, and then I've taken that off. So is that, that just, is that just a style thing, Amanda? It's not. It's just well, whatever you you want to to do. Okay. So I don't do it. So you can see with this one, I haven't left any any clear spaces. Um, it's just a different, you know, just being slightly more creative. So sure. if I can show you the serviette, what it looked like originally. So the original serviette that I've used was just the, all the horses like that. And then what I found is that with this, you can barely see the horse, but because it's too difficult to cut it up precisely, I've just torn it ever so slightly around each of the horses. Okay. Once you've used the decoupage to put that on, you can't see where the tissue paper starts and where the paint starts. It just completely blends in quite well. So this is what it looks like when you've torn it. Oh, okay. And the, the little bits of white literally just blends in. Sure. Um, so, yeah, pretty easy, really straightforward. And it doesn't take very long to do. I tend to do like probably about, well, I tend to do like one coat one day in the evening after work and then um, let that dry. So I do like three or four bottles and then the next day I'll do the second coat and then the third day do all the images on and then. Um, fourth day so in a week's time I can do quite a few bottles just sure. doing a step by step each night um, and letting things dry properly. Can you tell us about the lights that you use inside the bottles please? Are yeah. they are they special lights that you use? Yes. Yeah you can you can get them quite um, cheaply on Amazon. Um, so I tend to I tend to just buy um, them and they come 
on a string like this and they've got very very small little lights so you can see these little turn it on um, so each little bump is a it's a little um, led light um so they come on a string like that and you can just pop it into the bottle um i tend to buy them off amazon and they work out to be about a pound if you if if you like a pound to a pound 50 yeah. if you buy um like 10 or more at a time okay um so they're not hugely expensive there are better ones yeah. so obviously yeah. those ones use just the single use batteries um but carolyn and i for our own bottles so not the ones that i give away but for the ones that we keep at home we prefer to to use a slightly more expensive one but that's rechargeable that you oh, can okay. use a, a usb to to recharge and again we just you know buy them on on amazon and um you know it just pops in quite nicely into most of the bottles okay thank you okay all right my turn yeah okay have we got time for me to show you a bit we now? indeed okay so this i'm going back to that the previous slide where i gave you all the step by steps so you'll see is that okay there we go That's right so you'll see that i have the clear glass bottle there and i've got my little bits of scrap of tissue paper my tissue paper happens to have a little fleck in it a little um like a little confetti fleck in it and that's out of choice but you can get absolutely plain um tissue paper you can use different colors as well i often use the white because then it helps me not have to cut out so much of the background mm -hmm. on things so i'm just putting a very very thin layer of um, the Mod Podge on. And then I'm just going to put a little one piece on here, use my fingers to, to sort of press it down. I use the brush to spread it around. Like that. And then I'm just going to put the next piece again i mean this can be a bit of fun because it becomes a like a little puzzle um but you don't have to worry about it um you don't want very much mod podge on because um of course this is tissue paper so it's very thin and you don't want it to break but pretty much you just keep doing that where you just keep adding different pieces at different angles so that it looks all um random so did, are you able to see that okay yeah we can see that yeah right so blue peter style i have one here that is completely covered and what i want to do is remember the image that we saw earlier where i cut out yeah on one side and along the top so the what i'm going to do with this one is i'm actually going to wrap it around my bottle like this because it'll look like I have a garden of wildflowers growing up my bottle. Um, and that's what I want to achieve. Yeah. So I start by um, positioning it. Again, just a very, very light layer. This is really important because you don't want this tissue. Um, the serviette is very fragile now that you only have one layer. You don't want that to tear. So I just spread that on and then I go over it with my paintbrush. You know, on serviettes at the bottom edge, there's like little um, uh, embossed dots yes. along. When, when, when you have the, the decoupage medium and you go over the brush, it actually takes those out. So those oh, okay. go away. So, so you don't need to cut hurt. them away. No, you don't have to. So once I've done that, I just do a small section at a time. Carolyn, is it a good idea to do that little overlap rather than doing it right up to the corner? 
Um, it is. Right, when you yes. you'll, see, you'll see at the end, I have got an overlap that goes over that. And this bit, I didn't cut out very precisely because I didn't need to. The other side, you'll see that I have. So do you see, I've just put a little bit of, of this on because I want to make sure that I can position this the way I want to go where I want it to. Yep. So it doesn't take very long at all to get each side. No, no. I mean, Amanda and I have probably between us made a few hundred of these. Wow. So, um, so we we can do this very fast. <laughs> Maybe not fast enough for you. I'm sorry if we're taking. No, no. It's it's very quick <laughs> to achieve such a look in just a few well, minutes. You see, I'm not worried so much about messing this up because, as I said, we've made quite a lot of these. I wouldn't, you know, if you're doing it for the first or second time, do take your time. Don't rush like I am. Um, <laughs> the other thing is, if you do make a mistake, this is what is called a forgiving craft in that you can always patch it up. And you know what? Nobody knows. Um, if you found that the tissue um, uh, tore, you can usually mend it. If you can't mend it, you can take another part of the serviette and cut the same little section out and just uh, glue it over. So it's in the industry, we call it a forgiving craft. <laughs> and, and that's something that I like to specialize in. I like to specialize in things that anybody can do regardless of whether they're experienced or not. So now I'm coming up to the other end. And under normal circumstances, that would probably take you five minutes. I think that's taken us a couple of minutes. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready. Do you see, I'm bringing this over and you'll see this is going to overlap. Yeah. Because of the design that it is, it doesn't matter if it overlaps. Once you've got the base of it like that, so that's stuck on, you'll see there are bits that are, that are um, sticking out. You just need to go back and just make sure that you can glue those down. And did you say you would do a couple of layers of varnishing over yeah. the top? After, after this, I would do at least um, two layers. But again, remember what we said about how you need to make sure that you let it dry thoroughly. Um, I have been in a rush before where I needed a gift and I needed to do it quickly. And so what I did is I, um, I put the bottle near a radiator. Okay. Not on it, but near it. And then it just kind of proofed it a bit quicker. So that's it. Um, here we have a finished one. And you can see I've gone over it, not just with the Mod Podge, but after the Mod Podge, I wanted to seal it even more. And I went over it with varnish. Now I got that idea from Amanda, because Amanda does that. And it just gives it a really good seal. And then it means you can put it outside it if you shiny. want to. And it makes it shiny. So can I do one more thing? Sure. Um, what I want to show you here is, do you remember that forest fog yes. before? Well, this, I've done this bottle with that on it as well. Wow. But the other thing is that I, I love um, bling. I like um, twinkles or glitter or anything like that. So on both of these bottles, to finish them off, I've used these small um, self-adhesive gemstones or rhinestones. Now you can get a whole 
you can get a whole pack like this. So you see, it's got red, yellow, yes, green, yes, yes. blue, pink, and another blue. <laughs> All of those in the pound store for a pound. And they also do just the um, plain crystal ones. And they just finish these off so lovely. Um, I think that's the end and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I have a few questions for you. Sure. Is it okay? Yeah. Um, somebody saying I only have PVA glue. Now, would that work at all? You can try it. I have tried using it because, of course, it would be a less expensive way to do it. What I did find is that it was it. I don't know whether chemically it's a bit different and it would um, dissolve some of the serviettes. I also found that it doesn't seal it the same way, but okay. you could try it. I certainly I think on glass I wouldn't, but I, I, I would have thought on pottery, maybe it would be all right. Okay. And is that the same as Elmer's school glue, somebody's asking? Yes, Elmer's school glue is PVA glue, but Mod okay. Podge is a, is a special, um, you know, chemical formula that they've done. And um, uh, the other thing I like about Mod Podge is it, it has a bit more body to it, so it's not right. as runny. So it doesn't run, it doesn't leave streaks or marks and, and things like that. But you know, the whole thing is about experimenting. That's why Amanda and I have done hundreds because <laughs> we just can't stop and we experiment with new and different ways. So that the, the big thing is I encourage you to just experiment. Give it a go. <clears throat> Wonderful, yes, thank you very much. Um, now there was one more, uh, one more question. Um, oh yes, yeah, sorry, yes, Mod Podge. Is that available um, worldwide, do you know? It is indeed. Um, and if you had a problem and you weren't able to, you can buy it on Amazon. So I think <laughs> that, that, Amazon yeah. almost everywhere in the world. But um, I do know if you had a problem, let me know, because I actually know the guy at the top and I would ask him the question and he would actually open my email and read it. <laughs> Excellent.